Yeah, about time that was, <clears throat> that was a great gift from the ladies um, for her. I know that she's lost for words because you never can catch her off guard. And many of you know that you cannot catch her off guard. Even if I try to plan or anyone tries to plan something, it's very hard to do this. So good job on that, ladies. You know, you got her. And in her words, in my words, she'll remember that. But it's a, what that is, it's a, they said glamping, so it's a tent, it's, everything is in there. Like, I think you have like a fireplace and stuff like that. Just got to pack clothes and that's it, just go and fight some grizzly bears, amen? And come home with a, with a bear hat. Not because I'm a Chicago Bears fan, okay? So, I'm far from that. I am more mature than that. And speaking of maturity, this is what we're going to be talking about this morning, is spiritual maturity, because we all need to continue to grow up. We cannot stay as Jeffrey the giraffe would stay. I'm a Toys R Us kid. I don't ever want to grow up. It's been a long time since I've seen the commercials. I don't remember the words, but you all remember that, right? I don't want to grow up. I'm a Toys R Us kid. I don't want to grow up. I'm fine where I'm at. I'm okay where I'm at. I'm comfortable. Well, if that's a place that you want to be, then that's perfectly fine. But if you want to make it through the next year, then we got to be willing to take that extra step and taking in what God has desired for us. Because just like any updates in any computer system, it requires a, a refresher. The firewall needs to be updated. The the virus needs to be updated. If it's not updated, then you're going to be spammed. You're going to be malware. You're going to be all these things, that a computer virus. You're going to catch a virus. So it's important even for systems today to keep up with uh, the the world's technology. But even as Christians today in our our faith, it's important that we keep up in our faith. See, the thing that worked last month isn't going to work this month. The thing that worked last year... You're still trying to struggle to make it work this year because it, it's, it's, it's old. See, God will continue to move you to something new. He will expose you to new spiritual growth. And this is what we have to understand is that as we continue to grow, then we're doing okay. We're doing okay. Well, I haven't grown in the past month. That's fine. Realize it and grow from it. Once you realize something, then it's a decision that we have to make on a personal, on a personal level. Do I want to grow from this point? I recognize and I realize where I'm at. But God, do I want to grow more or do I just want to stay content? Do I want to stay where I'm at? See, in chapter 2 of 1 Corinthians... Right here, I'm just going to read it real quick. But it says, And I, brethren, when I came to you, did not come with excellence of speech or of wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God. He's talking to the, the Corinth church. For I determined not to know anything, about, anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified, which I was with you in weakness and fear and in much trembling, and my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this morning. I pray, Lord, that your spirit begin just to minister to our hearts, Lord. Help us to understand what is needed for us today, my God, so that we are able to take it in, Lord, and apply it to our hearts, Lord. Help us to grow from this, Lord, to further our understanding in you, my God. And help us, Lord, as we take steps forward, Lord, into the purposes that you have designed for us, into the lives, God, that you have given to us, Lord. And help us, Lord, to acknowledge you in all of this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Paul is not interested in seeing people come to Christ because of his persuasiveness. Instead, he wants to see the Spirit working among them. It's like a car salesman. He's trying to sell you a lemon, and he knows that it's a lemon, but 
He's not going to tell you it's a lemon. He's going to tell you it was a great car for the previous owner that the car took them to work and back home and it was faithful to them for so many years. He's not going to tell you the issues that the car had with it. He's not going to tell you out of the six cylinders, only two cylinders are working. He's not going to tell you that the suspension is very weak and so when you hit a speed bump, it's like driving a low rider. He's not going to tell you any of these things until you actually take it off into the lot, out of the lot and into the road. Because he says there is no test driving allowed. He's trying to convince you so that he can get a sale, so that he can get some type of commission from it, so that he can get a gain for himself, and that's all it is. That's all he has for him. And see, right here, Paul's saying, I'm not going to come to you in persuasive words, but I'm going to let the Spirit begin to minister to you because it is the Spirit that's going to be doing the work in your lives. It's not me that's going to be doing the work in you, but it's God and the Spirit of God that's going to be doing the work through you. And so we have to get to this understanding is when we come into a place of when we hear all the fancy, smancy, dancy words, that helps us in understanding in the word of God and what it can mean as far as breaking it down. But when it comes to applying it to our lives this morning, this is the very crucial step sometimes we miss from time to time in our Christian walks. And so Paul right here, he's just speaking the plain truth. He wants people to be relying on God and not on him. Paul was leading by an example. He knew what the church of Corinth wanted. We should today be a people that lead people to God and not to ourselves. Because we will always fail. We will always fail. It's not our words that win people over. People may be attracted to how you talk and how you preach or how you minister or how you witness. It's not by your persuasive words that you are winning people over, but it's by the spirit that's within you that is winning the people over for God. See, God is using you as an instrument, and this is something that we have to remember. You are an instrument of God. See, the word that you carry in you whether it's great or small, whether it's, it, your vocabulary hasn't gotten there yet, whatever you speak, when it comes to being a witness for God, it's the Spirit that begins to minister to that person. But not only does it minister to that person that you're talking to, but even in that, the Spirit ministers to you. Have you ever had that when you begin to talk to somebody and and you were working up your, all the nerves to go and talk to them, and, and you didn't know what you were going to say. And all of a sudden, you start speaking to them, and you start quoting verses. You start, get, you start getting inspired. You start getting encouraged. You start being happy. You start feeling the joy. It's because the Spirit is working within you. It's the Spirit that is bringing you to that place of remembering who God is in your life. It's the spirit that gives us that joy. It's not the preaching. It's not anything else but the spirit. But in the preachings and the teachings that we take in, this is what helps us to understand what the word of God means. It helps us to learn to be able to dissect it and to understand it in spiritual terms and not in worldly terms. Because when it comes to worldly knowledge, we can twist the word and we can manipulate it to where we want to have it and we want to live by it. But when it comes to the spiritual sense, then we begin to understand that it's going to be bettering us and that it's going to help us, that it's going to challenge us, that it's going to grow us. In verse 6, it continues to say, However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature. Yet not the wisdom of this age, nor the rulers of this age, who are coming to nothing. To the rulers of this age and to the people of this age that are coming to nothing. Paul is speaking to those that may have thought that they were highly spiritual. But yet when it came to their faith, they were very immature. They were very immature. Have you ever talked to somebody 
that maybe has been saved for so long and they've been and they have their they, they're able to talk back and forth on the word they're able to quote verse after verse after verse and after sitting there for a while you sit there like man they're pretty smart but when it comes to even the simplest things of God's will for their lives or God's purpose for their lives they still cannot understand that they still cannot attain that because all they have is just wisdom. All they have is just knowledge. But there is no spiritual maturity that is taking place in their lives. And this is why we have so many people that will go to church for so long that will stay the same because there is no spiritual maturity. There's no spiritual growth taking place. And this is where we have to challenge ourselves. This is where we ought to just look at ourselves. Am I satisfied with where I'm at today? Because if you're satisfied, then that's because you're satisfied, and that's okay if that's where God wants you at. But if you're wanting to dig deeper and you wanted to know what God has for you, that's coming up, that's the right thing for you, then that means you're going to have to press in and decide you're not in the right place. You're in a place of being comfortable. You're in a place of where you don't want to have any more growth in your life. And this is when we need to begin to seek out the Lord and ask Him, what is the next step that you want to take me to that next level? Because I don't want to stay in the same mindset. I don't want to have the same heart next week. I don't want to have the same mind next week. I want to continue to grow from what I was to who you called me to be. This should be the desire of all of our hearts. We should desire spiritual growth. How many of you want to grow? How many of you want to experience God more? How many of you want to be able to have more peace, more joy, more of God's goodness in your life? Then you've got to be willing to change. You've got to be willing to change. I know at one point in our lives, many of us have tried a diet. Many of us have, just because we thought salads would be good for us. It'll help us. It'll, it'll sustain you. It'll, it'll, it'll feed you. It'll give you all the nutrients. And then you went from salads to where I'm going to eat some M&Ms. And you went from M&Ms and salads to where I'm going to have a nice brisket. And on the brisket, I'm going to not put so much sodium on it. And you go from that to this. And you start adding all these things. And before you know it, that diet is already out the window. It's already done with. It's already gone. And there's some that were able to stick to it for like a month, for two months, for three months, for six months, because there's something that was, there was a dedication to it. No matter how hard it got, there was a dedication to it because there was a mentality that was behind it. I'm doing it for something. I'm doing it for a purpose that I want to be able to succeed in. And see, when it comes to a relationship with God, it gets in the same place in that, in that same heart, that same mentality. We got to be wanting it. We got to be hungry for it. We got to be desiring it. Because if we're not desiring it, all it is is just an emotion. And emotions only get us so far. Emotions don't cause growth. It causes instability. It causes headaches. It causes scenes and scenarios. It doesn't help anything. You get babied. Oh, they're there. You're going to be okay. Pat, pat. But does it change? Does it improve? Did you learn your lesson yet? Or are you still having to go through it again? Sometimes we ask God, why am I always having to go through this again and again? Because you haven't learned yet. Or you're learning little by little, but you haven't been able to fully take in, to fully receive. Verse 7, it goes on to say, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. The hidden, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages 
for our glory. See, it's not something that the world can understand. Not the whole world, the whole world can see the Bible. They can read the Bible, but they don't understand what the Bible is trying to speak. But to those that are in tune with the Spirit, they are able to understand what the Word is speaking and what the Word is trying to teach them, what the Word is trying to do for them. If we're seeking direction from God, if we want some type of direction from God, we won't hear nothing clearly. You will not hear nothing clearly unless you are spiritually willing and ready to receive. And not only that, but you are drawn close to God. Because I could be ready and willing to receive anything. But if I'm not close to God, I'm not going to be able to discern whether it's God or not. I'm going to go based on the decision, based on what I feel is right. Right. And what I feel may be wrong. See, when it comes to making decisions for ourselves, sometimes we take that decision making out from God's decision making and we put it onto our laps. And in all things and everything, it's important that we always go to God because everything that is for us, God will always. Lead us through it. God will always take us to a place where we need to go next. God will always speak to us the next spiritual step in our lives. God will show us where we're at and what needs to be changed about us. See, without God, we're just shooting in the dark. We don't know what the next step is. We, we have general ideas. We have worldly wisdom of what will work next. But if we're seeking that next opportunity of God to move in our lives, then what it is is we need God in our lives. We need a desire to be drawn closer to God. Because if we don't have that, then we're steering our own ship. We're walking our own paths. We're walking that fine line. See, when it comes to spiritual maturity, that means there's a challenge. Not a challenge for that day, a challenge for the rest of your life. It's something that will, that will cause pain. It's something that will cause hurt. It's something that will cause you to make decisions. And what I'm talking about, when it causes pain and when it causes hurt, because there's some things that you desire to do, but the Spirit says no. That's not for you. That hurts. That takes away. But is it taken away from me and my flesh? But is it, or is it adding to something that's going to add to me spiritually? There's been plenty of times in my life where I couldn't have made bad decisions. And I was always stubborn and I made decisions on my own. And every time I made a decision, it took me further away from God. But when I started to decide to leave it in God's hands, that's when it began to hurt. Because I know what I wanted. But it was like, God, what do you want? I know what I desired. But God, what is it that you desire? I know after the decisions that I made, it didn't cause me any good. God, you have nothing but good planned for me. So what is it that you desire? I've always had a life dream of, of having a boat and having an RV and having traveled in the world and, and all of these things. I've always had that desire. You only live life once. I want to be able to live it to the best of my ability. I want to, I told my kids this and they, made me, they told me one day they'll get me one, so I'm just talking about it right now. I'm not saying that they still have to, you know. But I know who said it. And I was like, I'm one of those guys. I want to be able to go to the beach. I want to have a lifted truck, four by four, and I want to be pulling people out from the sand. Why? Because I want to go vroom, vroom, like I'm the big guy on the block. I like going to the beach. I like driving on the sand. 
I like being that big truck that has a big, thick rope and saving people and dragging them out, charging them 100 bucks a tow. They got to pay for my gas for with all that vroom vrooming, right? Yeah. Not only that, but the cost of gas coming from me, from over here, to, from Bakersfield all the way to Pismo, now that's a lot of gas money. You can, yeah, we're going to charge for that. But don't worry. If, if you're in the church and you're out there, I got you free of charge. Don't worry about that. I got you. I want a big house. I know I want a two-story house. I know when I had a townhome or townhouse or whatever, two-story, I hated the stairs. Oh, my gosh. I thought it would be so awesome. But when you step on the second story, all you hear is quiet up there. You know, you want to tell the kids to be quiet. Quit running around. Don't have fun. Don't have fun. Oh, when the babies come around and you, you see them getting close to those stairs, you, your, your heart starts pumping, man. Your heart starts pumping. Your, your spirit's already captured them, but your flesh is like, hold on, I, I'm coming right after you. See, there's a lot of things that I want to do in my life. And at any point in any time in my life, I could drop everything if I wanted to. My life, my choice, that's the type of mentality I would have if I was in the world mentality. But how satisfied would I be once I got everything that I ever wanted in my life? What's the satisfaction of that if I sacrifice the greatest thing, which is my relationship with God? See, once we realize we get to this point in our lives, it's not too late to get back. See, wherever you're at right now and, and, and you're in a place of, man, I, I, I made this decision. Okay, realize it. Get back to God. Let God stare you back. There's nothing that is greater than what God can do in your life. But he allows us to learn from our mistakes. He allows us to learn from our mistakes. And that's what I'm so grateful for. God doesn't punish us because we made a bad decision. He helps us learn from it. He helps us learn, don't do that again. And then he brings us back into his presence. See, God is wanting to bring us back to his presence again. Because 2023 maybe wasn't the year for me, but 2024 is right at that door. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about that when I was putting on my microphone in the bathroom. 2024 is out that door. And even though we're on New Year's Eve, and you may know somebody that's called Steve. I'm going to stop right there. Who needs to believe? And he shall see. Come on. That not only God is good on New Year's Eve, but he's going to be good for the rest of his life. Even through all the strife. With or without a life, Jesus is the way. We got to understand that God wants the best for us. You can still be who you want to be as long as you're being an example of Jesus Christ. See, many of us have different characters, different attitudes, different everything, but God brought that. God accepted that. God knows who you are inside and out. And he is still willing to take that, to receive it. In verse 8, it says, Which none of the rulers of this age knew, for they had known they would have not crucified the Lord of glory. What a powerful statement right there. If they would have known Jesus was Jesus, they would have not crucified him. They wouldn't have crucified him. And I, but it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. They didn't know Jesus was the Messiah. They didn't know Jesus was the Son of God. They could not see this. 
looking back at the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the religious Jews and the religious leaders, they weren't open to receive what Christ was trying to bring to them. They were spiritually mature. They thought what they had was good enough. They were so blinded by their own consciousness, thinking that they were all that, that they did not recognize Jesus in front of them. They were set in their ways. Have you ever met somebody that was set in their ways? And you try telling them that they're going off the wrong way, and all they say is, I don't want to hear about it. I don't want to hear about it. Don't tell me about it. I don't want to hear about it. And then later on, they're like, I need your prayer. I need your word. I need your help. We can get like this so many times in our lives. We can stay like this too for so long. But some, a lot of us have experienced that for ourselves. We've experienced that for ourselves. But how long do we allow ourselves to stay in that place? It's a time when we feel rebellious. It's a time when it's like, you know what? I'm thinking about myself instead of, instead of what God desires for me. I'm thinking about my pain and my hurt rather than what's, what's good for me. And it's never too late to get back on track. It's not too late to go back to the Lord. And say, you know what? I may have made a mistake. No, you did make a mistake. We have to be willing to admit to it. God will bring restoration in that. And 1 Timothy 6 verse 4 says, He is proud knowing nothing but is obsessed with disputes and arguments over words from which come envy, strife, reviling, evil suspicions. If we get set in our ways and how we want to serve God, how will we ever grow? How will God ever challenge us? How will we be able to recognize what it is that he wants for our lives? How will we be able to know how much he really loves us? You will not be able to experience how much God really loves you until you're really ready to accept him for who he is. Who is God in my life today? Who is God in your life today? What does God mean to you at this very specific moment? When I say God, what comes to mind? What's the very first thing? That's what God means to you. If it takes some time to think about it, then that means you, you should probably be going to prayer and finding out, well, Lord, why is it that I respect you? Why is it that I love you? Why is it that I desire you? What is it? Because once we're able to obtain that, that's going to be one of many things that is going to keep you from sliding further away. Spiritual maturity is understanding that at times we slide away. We distance ourselves without knowing it. And we catch ourselves in the midst of it. Do so. How long is it going to take for us to get back to God and say, Lord, here I am. Help me to make better decisions for my life. Not only for my life, but for my family. For my well-being. In verse 10, it goes to say, But God has revealed them to us through His Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things. For what man knows, the things of man except for the Spirit of man which is him in him even so no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God if we desire to know more about God then we must draw closer to him I already said that we must draw closer to him there are no shortcuts there's no there's no bible apps that are going are going to draw you closer to God there's no books that are going to help you get that, uh, get that quick fix. A relationship with God begins with prayer. Begins with knowing who He is in your life, not in someone else's life. 
how great and powerful He is for someone else, but how great and powerful He is for you. We have to understand this because that is our ultimate source. That is gonna, what's going to keep you through your hardest of times and your most difficult of times and the times where you feel like, you know what, I can't go up there right now. I can't do what you're calling me to do right now because I'm having a bad day, because I'm having a bad week. You know what, God already knows about your day and He already knows about your week, but he wants, what He wants to know from you today is no matter, regardless of all the things that are taking place in your life, are you still willing to put Him first? See, this is the biggest challenge that we have in Christianity today. Are we willing to put God first above all things? And I'm not talking about just your job. I'm not talking about your finances. I'm not talking about anything else. I'm talking about just overall, plain and simple. Are you willing to put God first in your life over all things today? Starting this morning, are you going to make a decision to say, Lord, I put you above all things today. I put you first above anything But we, when we say that, what's the next thing that comes to mind? Well, I got this, and I got that stopping me. I got this slowing me down. Then that's not a decision. That's already going back to the what ifs. That's already going back to that source of obstruction and that source of distraction is the greater source than the source up above. I give a power and authority to my distraction here, my distraction here, and my distraction here. So I got about 30, 30, 30, 90%, 90% here and 10% God I'm going to give to you. It doesn't work that way. It does not work that way. You're going to find yourself on an emotional roller coaster. You're going to find yourself happy for a moment and all of a sudden you're depressed and you're full of emotions and you're full of defeat for who knows how long in that 10% when you finally die to your flesh because we have to get to that point to die to our flesh. And when we get to that point where we're saying, Lord, I need you once again, and you begin to experience it again, and all of a sudden your doubts come right back on track, right back on time, and then head, there you go, heading right back to the valley. In Christianity... I believe that Christians today have a lot of peaks and valleys because decisions are not being made up. Decisions aren't being made. They have to be made. When you commit to something, that means it's for a lifetime. When you commit to, some, when you commit to a marriage, that's for a lifetime. That means until you die. And that does not mean you pray to God and you ask Him to take you right now. Because you're only 30-something. You still have a whole life ahead of you. Or 20-something. And your 40s is okay. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> you can't. You stick it through. You stick through it. You work through it. Why do you do that? Because you love that person. You love them. Even though they're a pain in your neck. Even though you want to break their neck, you still love them. It's just an emotion. It's a feeling that will come and go. But at the end and above all things, you're willing to always work through it. Same thing with God. Are we loving him that much, even through the thick and thin, that we're willing to stick through it? We're willing to put our best foot forward. We're willing to seek his advice rather than our own understanding. What is it that we're seeking this morning? 1 Corinthians 2.11 says, Just as people know their own minds, so the Spirit knows the things of God. The Spirit knows the things of God. I desire to know who God is. Not only who He is, the creator of all things, but who He is in my life. What is He going to do for me? Not that I look for gain, but I look for deliverance. I look for change. I look for growth. Because I know somebody may be watching. And somebody may be watching you. Somebody is depending on you. What are we doing 
to get to that next step? What are we going to give up? Because we talk about, you know, New Year's is when, the, is when everyone makes the, New Year's is a new me. How, the, I'm going to do this starting next year. I'm going to drink less soda starting next year. That ain't going to last long. You're committing to something you know ain't going to happen. If I try to tell you I'm going to commit to drinking less sodas, I'm, I'm going to lie to you. That, that's not even going to happen. I drink fewer sodas. Because fewer is more than less, right? <laughs> if I say I drink fewer sodas, that means if out of a 12-pack, I'll drink 10. If I drink less, then I'll drink 5 out of the 12. So I drink fewer sodas. Okay? Hey, we got we to gotta work this out. You know? Something that I could stay committed to. Something that I can, you know, at least stick to. But we do this with God. We do this with God. Okay, Lord, I'm going to commit to you in this place. Well, yeah, that's probably the easiest place in your life to commit to God. Why don't you give a little bit more? Why don't you give a little bit more? Fight for the goodness of God. This, you know you could already obtain. Because in the mind, all I got to do is pray and read and stay close to him. Yeah, that's simple. But if you're wanting growth, then you got to go from the simple to the stretching. And that's the key. In Christianity, you could keep Christianity simple. You could keep it just as is. But if you want growth, then you're going to challenge yourself. You're going to push yourself past those limits of what you never experienced before. Verse 12 says, Now we, now we receive not the spirit of the world, <coughs> the spirit from... Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but the, which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. Nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. They are spiritually discerned. You cannot take a guess at what God wants for you. The Spirit will help you discern what is right from wrong. The Spirit will lead you to making the right decisions and not making the what-if decisions. It's the Spirit that guides us and helps us grow into spiritual maturity as long as we're sub subject, as long as we're submitted to what the Holy Spirit is trying to speak to us. It says, but in 15, but he who is spiritual judges all things. Yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the, the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ. And how do we have that? Through the Holy Spirit that guides us, that teaches us, that helps us to be able to discern. This morning, I'm challenging you this morning. You want that growth in your life, and you want that change. Are you going to allow God to change you this year? Are you going to allow him to challenge you more this year? What better way going, before going into the New Year's? What better way? I know for some of us, we allowed God so much room in our lives this past year to work on some of our issues and some of our stuff because we all have issues. We all have issues. And we allowed him so much room. But what about going into the next year? Are we going to continue to let him to work on those issues or are we going to close the door on him? Are we going to close the book and say, you know what, I'm, I'm through. Uh, that kind of stretched me. That wore me thin this past year, and I can't take it anymore. See, but God is a good God, and he works in steps, in steps that we're able to receive and able to walk through. He walks with us side by side. 
His word says he will never leave us nor forsake us. So even when it feels like it's getting hard, he's still there with us. Believe in God even much more this year because the world is getting that much more uglier. And the world is getting that much more evil. And I'm telling you this morning, just because the world is getting evil doesn't mean that we have to get evil alongside with it. Doesn't mean that we ought to think, well, if the world wants to get this way, I also could be this way too. And see, we all know that we have a different side of us that we also can be at the same time. But what are we choosing this morning to be? What is the greater purpose for our lives this morning? Is the greater purpose to be in the world and to be part of the world and to influence those in the world? Or is our purpose, the greater purpose for our lives, is to be an influence to others, to be able to preach the word of God to those that we come into contact with and to see families and marriages get saved and get healed in the name of Jesus. Jesus will always have power and authority over all things in this world, no matter how ugly, no matter how evil it can get. But we got to be spiritually minded. we got to be spiritually ready, spiritually mature for this. Because like my wife, and we talk about this, we're ready to go. We're, we don't care. We know how the streets are. We know how the, the mentalities are out there. But that does not scare us. That does not scare us. What scares us is missing opportunities of not being able to speak to people when God's given us that time to speak to people. It's time to press in. Are you ready to press in? That decision has to be made in your heart this morning. Amen. Father, this morning we just thank you. Father, we praise you, Lord, this, this morning, my God. You are worthy, Lord. You helped us get to this point. 